Hey everybody, welcome back to another daily drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. And the topic today, Carolina football, spring football comes to a close Saturday because the main media covering UNC football and basketball were away covering the basketball team for so long. We went a few weeks, a couple of weeks, I guess, with no fresh spring football coverage, but we've picked that back up. Here in the last week and a half, we'll close the week out strong through the spring game and have a ton of stuff for you guys. We've already had a ton, and we're going to have a lot more. And don't forget, just because spring football comes and goes doesn't mean the content stops. We are going to have a load of Carolina football content for you to close out April, throughout May, throughout June, throughout July, Carolina basketball as well. And of course, we are hitting it hard on recruiting for both sports as well. That's what we do here at Tar Heel Illustrated. Okay, the topic is Des Evans, fifth-year defensive end. I almost want to joke and say part-time hybrid, but the hybrid term in Des Evans probably doesn't ring uh, very well with a lot of Carolina fans because they think back to his first two years when he was playing the hybrid position and in coverage a lot and wasn't ready for it, admittedly wasn't ready for it, and it just didn't work out, and it was part of some of the problems people had with Jay Bateman's defense before he moved on to other places. So what I want to really hit on here isn't so much Des the football player, though I think Des the football player is an important part of this because I do think they go hand in hand. But it's Des Evans, the young man. It's Des Evans, the guy who arrived at Carolina, who wouldn't say seven or eight words. He was a young, young man, uh, uh, barely a young man. And we spoke to him Saturday after practice over in the Keenan Football Center. And I was highly impressed. And one of the things I've told people for years that I love about doing this job and why I prefer college over pro, and I've covered all the major pro sports. I covered Cam Newton's first three years with the Panthers. I covered the Carolina Hurricanes Stanley Cup Championship. I covered the Hurricanes a ton when I was at Fox Sports, a ton. I covered a decent amount of NBA with the old Bobcats when I was at Fox Sports before they became the Hornets again. And that's great. I enjoyed all that. But I enjoy college more because I love seeing dudes like Des Evans come in, not sure of themselves. Their bodies aren't totally ready for the game, but they're thrown out there some. They struggle. They go through battles. And as their game matures, they mature. So go check out the interview with Des. It was really good. I was really impressed to see the process of the experience. And when people talk about college athletes and they need NIL, they need to be paid, they're taken advantage of. I, I, I have come across so many dudes that come in as freshmen. They have no idea what to tell some old slob like me in the media. Got a camera in front of them and we're asking them questions about why they lost, why they won about themselves. They don't know what to say. Some do, most don't. They're, they're intimidated, they're naive, they're just inexperienced. And then they grow as they go through the college experience. The value of an athlete, a young 20, 21-year-old athlete, having a bunch of media around him, asking him questions, is an experience most college kids don't get. They get a value in their experience that is never quantified. No one ever talks about it, but I could tell you right now, Des Evans sitting across the desk from someone interviewing him for a job right now is going to get that job a lot of the time. And it's a big part of his growth during his time at North Carolina. It's a testament to him and it's a testament to the program. Now his football's gotten better. And I think these two things go hand in hand. His ratio of mistakes have gone down. Last year was his best year. This year, I think, is going to be better. I, it's kind of weird to think a guy playing a fifth year could have a breakout year. 
a guy who's gotten snaps each season, but I do think Dez might fit that description because as he said, it's kind of coming all together now. And that's with him going back and occasionally playing in what we used to call the hybrid role. Now it's different responsibility at rush. And for those who don't know, rush is the is the name for the position Jack was. It was Jack under Gene Chizik. It's Rush under Jeff Collins, in part because it's more aggressive. Also, there's an intertwining of the Rush ends in this outside linebacker Rush Jack spot. Now, I hope I'm not confusing people too much. But just imagine, you've got two more traditional defensive ends in Bo Atkinson and Des Evans, and you've got a tweener type in Cayman Rucker, who's a monster on the field. He's a football player. That should be his position, football player. He went back to the Jack position last year, and he was he had, what, second-team all-ACC year. He had a phenomenal year. But you're going to see scenarios where the three of them are on the field. And the reason this is possible is because a guy like Des Evans, who had no understanding of coverage at all, he had never done it in his life until he showed up to Chapel Hill, suddenly was thrown into that, and he struggled. There was a lot of bad film to look at, but he kept looking at the film. And as he kept looking at the film, he grew as a player and as an individual. Then Gene Chizik comes in, and Des was so excited when he told us, hey, I get to put my hand back on the ground, which he was thrilled about because he didn't do it for two years, and his game has gotten better. He actually said, and I asked him this Saturday about the path he's taken. It's been a very wobbly, jagged path. And he said that he was glad the question was asked because he looks back at those experiences early on, playing the hybrid position as a blessing because he struggled, but it forced him ultimately as a football player, as a person to get outside the box. And, you know, you screw up, but you can learn from screwing up, man. Athletes do it all the time. And the really good ones are great at learning about screwing up. And what Dez has done is he's applied all that to his process. And now here is he's going back out there, especially with Cayman Rucker hurt right now. And he's in coverage some, and he says he's doing pretty well. And it's something he's going to have to do some if he wants to play at the next level, which is absolutely the mission. He said, the mission is the first round. I'm sure if he ends up in the third round, he'll be pretty cool with that. And he'll have an opportunity to play in the league and make some money. But his growth as a player and his perspective of what he's being asked to do as a player is so impressive. And the fact that he's articulating it in the way that he is, as a journalist, I love it. Because A, it's an easy story to write. A lot easier story to write about Des Evans now than it was a few years ago. And I love it. It is one of the great things about college athletes and being around college athletes and watching them grow and and seeing them stay at a school and not just hightail it first time, first opportunity because there's a little adversity. He stuck to it. He's going to finish with a degree from North Carolina. There are a lot of things he could take from his time at UNC into his post-college life and it will help him. And, and I love that. And I wanted to talk about it here in this drop. I know sometimes people just want X's and O's. They want who's looking good or talk about the quarterbacks or, hey, talk about Amari. And I think something like this needs to be discussed too because it's an important layer part of the program. And this is what the program set out to achieve when Mac first got there in 2019. But the portal NIL kind of screwed that thinking up. He's got to go about things a little differently now. And that's not talked about a whole lot either. But having a guy like Des Evans stick it out and get to the point now where he could improve on 33 tackles last year, five TFLs, he had three sacks, 17 hurries. He batted three balls. He had 19 stops, S-T-O-P, lowercase s, the S-T-O-P or uppercase. Those, by the way, are plays that result in failures by the opposing offense. And his PFF grade was a respectable 65.3. He got better across the board, and he was more consistent. If he takes that next step forward this year on the field, like I've seen him take in dealing with us, 
a pretty good player. You could have an all ACC player there. You could have a guy that puts himself in position to make some nice money. And I hope that happens to him because I love seeing dudes grind and fix what's not working and make it so it works. And I think Des Evans has done that. So kudos to him. Kudos to the program for working with him and putting him in position to take advantage of these things. If you're excited about Des Evans, the growth as a dude and the growth as a player and what kind of season it can have for the Tar Heels this fall, go ahead and click like on this video. Tell your Carolina Tar Heel friends that we're here. Let them know we're here and we're talking every day just about, certainly Monday through Friday, most of the time. And we've got a ton of content on our site. A lot of it's premium. Most of it is not premium. Let them know we're there. Let them know we're here. And make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you get alerts every time we upload, which is often even in the off season. We don't slow down, guys. We are going to be rolling out a crap load of content through the rest of April, May, June, and into and well into July. Once football starts, it'll be football bonanza and still have some basketball stuff too. I'm AJ, and I appreciate you guys hanging out.